So I was watching the final Kiss concert last weekend on Mad at, at Madison Square Garden. And if you're not a Kiss fan, don't don't stop watching. Keep watching because this is my point here is much bigger than Kiss. And I began to realize that the era of arena rock, of big arena rock is just about done. It's winding up faster than any of us want to think about. And that kind of sucks for selfish reasons. I mean, these big rock shows that I've been going to since I was a kid, and I'm assuming many of you been, have been going to since you were kids, are an experience. Our experience. It's an experience I'm going to miss. And I do appreciate the fact that the classic bands I grew up knowing and loving many of them continue to release new music and, and keep things fresh and more close to home i think it sucks that many of the bands we love are getting old is that it reminds us that we are also getting old which i think is the major i think it's one of the major issues here so let's step back and take stock of the current situation Channel 33, RPM. As it says, watching that KISS pay-per-view, their final show in Madison Square Garden. I do think it really is their final show. I know a lot of bands are like, we're retiring, we're done, this is our farewell. But I do think this is the last the last KISS, to steal a phrase. They've announced that now they're being replaced by avatars and virtual KISS is coming, which is, I don't know, something I'm not too interested in, nor is it something I think I fully understand. I don't know what's going on there, but it's not my jam. But Kiss is really the thin edge of the wedge, if that makes sense. They are not the first band of that era to check out. And we know Ozzy's basically retired, right? I don't think he's ever going to perform again. Geezer Butler has said he's done performing. Slayer has announced their retirement. So these great bands that I grew up with and many of you grew up with, are done. They've said they're done, and I generally believe them, but there's so much more, man. There's so many bands from that era of classic rock, right? The classic big arena rock era from the 70s through to the 80s that are close to done. We got Aerosmith. They tried touring this year, but they had to uh, postpone all their shows on this apparent farewell tour until 2024 because of a vocal injury suffered by Steven Tyler. Steven Tyler is 75 years old. There's Bruce Springsteen as well. He postponed the remainder of his 2023 North American tour dates to recuperate from a peptic ulcer disease. The Scorpions, Germany, they've announced they'll be touring in 2024 and 2025, but they're in their mid-70s, man. Klaus, the singer, 75 years old. Got to wonder how much time he's got left performing. White Snake may never perform again. David Coverdale 72 and he had some health issues. Priest is touring this year, but Rob Halford, one of the best metal singers of all time, he's 72 years old. There's rumblings that ACDC is going to do some stadium shows in 2024. Angus Young is 68. I guess that that's relatively young in the context of some of the artists we're talking about here. But Brian Johnson is 76 years old, man. He's going to be 80 years old in four years. I mean, can he be 80 years old in Belta? You shook me all night long. If he can, more power to him. I mean, the Rolling Stones have tour dates in 2024. And Mick Jagger is 80 years old. But let's be realistic. There's slim to little chance that these artists I've mentioned so far will still be touring entities, will still be playing gigs regularly, say, in the year 2030. We're down to, like, the last five or six years that we can see these artists and continue to go to these big shows and worship at the altar of Alice Cooper or Judas Priest or whatever. I'm not saying this to be depressing. I'm saying this as fact. There's some bands in the classic era who still do have more years than them. Motley Crue, Nikki has said they want to make it to the 50th anniversary of the debut album, which brings us to 2031. By then, Nikki will be close to his mid-70s. Guns N' Roses, I think they'll continue on. I think they'll keep on keeping on for a while. And Def Leppard seems to have a bit longer in them. I guess the Foo Fighters will be around for a while. Metallica probably. James Hetfield and the boys are pushing 60 years old, but they still got some time. Green Day. 
There's still some stuff, but a lot of these artists are going to be done with touring in the next five to six years. The ones I mentioned before, right? Springsteen, Scorpions, Alice Cooper, Whitesnake, Priest, ACDC, The Stones. It's inevitable, right? The Stones are kind of like the canary in the coal mine, but uh, they're not going to be doing it forever, man. Which leads me to wonder, like, once all our favorites are gone, what's left? Who is there to... To claim the throne, right? What? Where are the next? Who are the next arena rock bands? And that's kind of where I struggle a little bit. I mean, I guess there's Greta Van Fleet. They did arena tour this year or last year. I'm not sure how well it did, but they did play arenas. And I guess there's a handful of other artists who could kind of inherit the throne but there's not a lot there which leads me to believe that that golden age of arena rock of all these great rock and hard rock and heavy metal bands who can like fill a 12,000 seat arena sadly those days are really winding down there's not there's not a lot of time left there and i think we have to accept that the younger generations are just not into rock to the same extent that we were, right? Like growing up, I lived and breathed for the music. And again, painting with broad strokes here, I don't see that to the same extent among the younger generations. I think there's just too many options now, man. I mean, back in the day, we had music and then I guess movies and video games. But at the time, video games are not as big as they are now. Like growing up, I had Atari 2600. Nowadays, I mean, kids are just living and breathing in the, in the internet age, right? These games, that's kind of where it's at. And there's so many more entertainment options nowadays where I don't think which the result of which is I don't think music has the same cachet it did have, at least for me, growing up back in the 80s. And I don't want to leave the impression that there's no new good music being made, because there is a ton of good music. There's probably more great rock music now than there has been maybe even forever, right? Because nowadays you don't need a record label to get your music out there. You don't need to spend tens of thousands of dollars in a recording studio. You can record at home and distribute the music yourself. So the music is there, but I don't think the audience is necessarily there in the same way it was in decades past. So what's my point besides depressing myself and all of you by making this video? Because my point is not to de be depressing and not to lament the loss of what we had and the very quickly approaching end of an era. That's not what it's about. The point of this video is to be thankful for growing up in the times we grew up in where we got to see great bands, fill arenas, and just witness the release of all these landmark albums. Number one, that is my point. And number two, probably even more important, is to take advantage of these last five, six, seven, eight years where some of these bands are still playing because we know the end of the road is coming for a lot of these acts. So get out, man, enjoy it, buy the tickets, go to the show, stand there, throw your fists in the air because like everything, all good things sadly must come to an end eventually. All right, 33 years, I don't mean to be depressing with this video, but this has been going through my mind that the end of an era is fast approaching. Rock's not dead, but it's old and wrinkled, as I said. What do you think? Am I off base here? Let me know in the comments below. Have a great rest of the week. I'll be back again really soon. Until then, dear 33 years, keep on spinning.